Well, actually, I think the recent news of OMG, what's interesting is to compare it to the past. So we started in object computing and distributed object computing. We, we helped create the middleware market, control the hype around object computing. Uh, and, and then we made a big change in the middle of the 1990s and said, there's something to do with modeling here, which will create enormous opportunities in the computing business. Uh, and we uh, adopted our, our first modeling standard, the Unified Modeling Language. Um, but actually the bigger change, which didn't get as much visibility in the late 90s, was our move into vertical markets. And now 85% of all OMG standards are in vertical markets like healthcare, finance, telecommunications, manufacturing, civil government, military, military communications, command and control, automotive design, all sorts of things. So what's new this year? Um, we've got a lot of exciting things going on in software quality, uh, where the first standard came out in 2013, uh, automated function point count. And in 2014, we're going to see quite a few metrics of good and bad quality software coming through from our consortium for IT software quality through the OMG standards process. This year, we'll also see standards for uh, automotive dependability analysis, um, which has been, if you'll pardon the pun, driven by Toyota for the last year and a half. That's quite exciting. And um, we also uh, will be launching our new standards effort in natural resources, especially focused today on oil and gas. Uh, so there's always plenty of things going on. Uh, we're also starting to invest heavily in, uh, in China, um, where we're seeing growth. Um, the first, uh, first major Chinese company has come in, that's Huawei. Um, not just because of their interest in telecommunications, but actually their interest in software quality, their interest in cloud computing, and so forth. Well, I think that has nothing to do with OMG per se. Obviously, the value to using standards is it gives you choice. It allows you to change vendors. Um, and, it, and it brings down the cost because you have f fewer approaches to solving a problem, you have uh, lower training costs, uh, and, you, and the switching costs go to zero because you can switch vendors whenever you want. That means that the vendors are now going to be competing based on the quality of their offerings, the cost of their offerings, the support for their offerings, and so forth. You know, it's, it's actually a lot to do with how we invented OMG in the early days. We're a standards organization, but different than others in many important ways. I think the single most important difference of OMG is that our membership is half vendors and half users. There are also government agencies, which are users, and there are universities and research institutions. But the problem with vendor-driven standards organizations is they develop standards that nobody cares about because they don't meet the requirements of real users. The problem with user-driven standards organizations is they, they publish requirements for, uh, for products the vendors can't deliver. We balance that half and half. Our vendors and users and academics and research institutions and government agencies work together to develop requirements. And then any vendor can propose a specification. So our standards process is different too. Uh, that's, I think, uh, the best explanation for our longevity. There were many standards organizations created in the late 80s, Corporation for Open Systems, X Open Company, Open Software Foundation, and so forth. We're the only one that still exists with the same name and same focus. And that's because we have this balance between users and vendors, and we have a process that operates really quickly. CIOs, by participating in standards, can make sure their requirements are known and can see those standards before the products hit the street and be ready for them, be ready to take advantage of them. That's an enormous value. The interesting thing about the automated function point uh, standard, which came out um, just about a year ago now, is that um, not only was it adopted through the usual OMG standards process of vendors and users coming together to define requirements and then a standard coming through a, a very rapid adoption process, but the group that was pulled together to develop the specification, which is called the Cor Consortium for IT Software Quality, CISQ or CISC, we also run that group. We bring together those vendors and users, mostly users in fact, uh, that want to uh, have software quality metrics that are consistent and automatable. Um, because if they're inconsistent, they don't give you the same answer twice. That's obviously not valuable. And if they're not automated, that, that means they're managed, they're done by hand, they're expensive to do, and therefore not done, or at least not done often enough. So this idea of automating those functions, automating tests, automating defect tests, automating uh, complexity and, and size metrics is extremely important, uh, both to CISC, which is obviously a, a, a group of companies that cares the most about it, uh, but to OMG because those quality standards have an impact on everything else we do.